Growing up, I always thought all the living organisms on the Earth's surface were categorized into two types. They were either plants or they were animals. Plants were autotrophs. They made their own food by photosynthesis. Animals, on the other hand, were heterotrophs and they consumed other animals or other plants for their food. Animal cells did not have a cell wall. Plant cells had cell walls that were made of cellulose. Turns out that plants are called plantae in Latin, animals are called animalia in Latin, and even in English we've carried over these names, plantae and animalia, to describe these two categories of living organisms. Now, I always thought that there were just two types of living organisms, plants and animals. Turns out that that's wrong. Mushrooms, I'm sure you've heard of these organisms, I'm sure you've seen these, or maybe even eaten them. Mushrooms don't fit into either plantae or animalia. Why is that? Let's see. Mushrooms are not autotrophs. Mushrooms are heterotrophs. Well, wait a minute, then why don't we just fit mushrooms into animalia? The problem is that mushrooms have a cell wall, and animalia cannot have cell walls right? So we're stuck and we need a third category. And so we make a third category called fungi. Fungi are heterotrophs. Fungi are actually decomposers. Fungi don't eat living organisms like uh, animalia may. Fungi eat dead organisms. They are decomposers of dead and decaying organic matter. Fungi have a cell wall. Now there's one interesting fact about the cell wall that fungi have. It's not made of cellulose, it's made of chitin. It's a little different from cellulose. Okay, let me remind you about another fact about these categories. Animalia is always multicellular. Plantae, always multicellular. Fungi, mostly multicellular. You do have unicellular fungi as well. Let's get into the examples. An example of fungi are mushrooms and yeast. Mushroom is multicellular, yeast is unicellular. Okay, so are these three categories it? Like, can all the living organisms fit into these three categories? Turns out, there are living organisms that don't fit into fungi, plantae, or animalia. Example, amoeba. Do you remember that small, slimy, unicellular organism that moves using its feet called pseudopodia? Well, amoeba do not fit into fungi, plantae, or animalia. Why is that? Amoeba aren't decomposers. Amoeba do not produce their own food. Amoeba are heterotrophs. Okay, why don't we put them into animalia then? Amoeba are unicellular, whereas all of animalia is multicellular. So, we make another category for these kind of living organisms. There's another organism that doesn't fit into fungi, plantae, or animalia, and that's algae. Algae often make their own food like plantae using photosynthesis, but they are not multicellular always. So we're stuck with a few organisms that don't fit into these categories. Okay, so we make another category for these organisms and we call that category as protista. So protista are either heterotrophs or autotrophs. Protista, some of protista have cell walls. Protista are mostly unicellular. Mostly unicellular examples, amoeba, algae, paramecium, these are examples of protista. Okay, so are we done? Are these four categories sufficient to categorize all the living organisms? Turns out, no. We've left out bacteria. Bacteria doesn't fit into either protista or fungi or plantae or animalia. Okay, so we're gonna make some room for bacteria. Let's shrink that and this is a picture of, these are some pictures of bacteria. Bacteria are found in curd, bacteria is found in cheese, bacteria is found in our gut, bacteria is found, um, bac some bacteria can cause infections. There are different types of bacteria and all of these types of bacteria are going to be clubbed together and put into our fifth category. Okay, so bacteria are always unicellular. Okay, this category mostly has a cell wall, so I'll put a tick on that. And this category is sometimes heterotrophic, sometimes autotrophic. And the name of this category is called Monera. Monera consists of all the bacteria in the world. There is uh, no other organism that is classified as Monera. So these five categories, Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae, and Animalia, these make up the five categories or the five kingdoms of living organisms.
Okay, now you might be wondering, wait a minute, why did bacteria have to be a separate category in itself? Why couldn't we just place bacteria with protista? After all, protista could be unicellular as well, and protista could have a cell wall, and even the mode of nutrition kind of seems to be similar. Here's the answer. Do you remember in your previous grades, we've studied about prokaryotic and eukaryotic organisms? Turns out, all these organisms here, these are eukaryotic, whereas Monera is prokaryotic. Now, if you don't remember what these terms mean, all organisms that have a membrane-bound nucleus, these are eukaryotic, and uh, eukaryotic cells also have membrane-bound organelles like mitochondria, okay? On the other hand, prokaryotic cells do not have membrane-bound nuclei or membrane-bound organelles. Okay, so that's the difference. So Monera is set apart in that way from all these four kingdoms of living organisms. So these are our five kingdoms. Let me write it down and compare all of these five kingdoms of living organisms with each other. So uh, you've got Animalia, Plantae, Fungi, Protista as eukaryotic and Monera as prokaryotic. Another thing you might want to look at is that Animalia and Plantae are entirely multicellular right? And fungi is mostly multicellular, protista is mostly unicellular, and we end up with monera, which is entirely unicellular. If you look at this progression, we're moving from multicellular to unicellular in this direction, right? And we're moving from eukaryotic to prokaryotic in this direction. So basically, the complexity of living organisms decreases as we move from animalia towards monera. That's it for this video. Thank you.